Welcome to Life with Bella. This is uh, Thanksgiving season, our harvest festival as in some parts of the world. And it's a good time to look back on this year and thank God for his part in our lives. This is a great occasion to thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness in being a part of this ministry. Thank you for uh, allowing me to come alongside you to encourage you and to empower you with his word. I am blessed when you are blessed. A lot of you have taken the time to either email me or text me when you received a now word, when you received encouragement from his word. And uh, that has been a great blessing. That gives me a feedback on where the word is landing, where it is uh, taking root and uh, the results uh, that are coming out of uh, the word that has been sown. Thank you for your faithfulness in praying for me and for our family and also the ministry. So let's start with a word of prayer and we will go to today's topic. Thank you, Lord, for this season. Uh, We come before you, Lord, uh, during this time, firmly believing uh, that your word is going to empower us and edify us. In the loving name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Today's topic is a, a different kind of thanksgiving. Okay. I don't know the condition of your heart even as I'm talking, whether you are uh, broken or bruised or uh, maybe you are brimming with joy for the good things that has happened in your life. Some of you may be saying, I don't want to uh, think about God. I am overwhelmed or busy with uh, different things that are going on in my life. Or maybe you have uh, a bitterness in your heart. Maybe like Hannah in the Bible, you're saying, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. My prayer and my hope is that uh, his word will meet you exactly uh, where your need is. Friend, that is the power of his word. His word can meet every need of ours. Okay? So even as uh, we are beginning to study, I want you to... Come with that kind of a faith, with a hope, Lord, I want to hear from you and I want to receive your word. Thanksgiving keeps your heart tender towards God. Basically, Thanksgiving is a heart issue. You know, it's easy to say, you know, just say what you're thankful for, but what you are saying or not seeing depends so much on what you have in your heart. Okay? In the Bible, uh, when you see unthankfulness is a sign of hardness of heart. It's a sign of depravity. I take this point from two scripture references. Uh, One is Romans 1, 21. It reads, Although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God or give Him thanks. But their thinking became nonsense and their foolish heart was darkened. In 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 5, uh, we see uh, the signs of the last days. One of it is unthankfulness. It is grouped alongside... um, Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, proud, disobedient to parents, unholy, unloving. So grouped along with all these is uh, unthankfulness. So it is a very important issue because uh, Proverbs tells, uh, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows out of it. One version puts it very beautifully. Out of it spring the issues of life. So, to keep your heart tender towards God. It is a place where the word of God uh, lands. It is a place of multiplication of the seed of 
God's word. So thankfulness will help you prepare your heart to receive from him. But how do we keep a heart softened? One of the ways is, uh, which is also the next point, it is by remembrance. Thanksgiving enables you to remember what God has done in your life. Psalm 103, 1 to 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, all the benefits he has done in our life. So each time you take the time to remember your bringing uh, to your uh, forefront uh, the things that God has done in your life. It's a process of looking back and thanking God, right? I like uh, Psalm 136. When my kids were small, we used to do this exercise. Maybe if you have the Bible, you can open it now. It's a beautiful psalm. It kind of lists all that uh, God has done other than the creation. Uh, it goes on to talk about how God's hand was uh, with the Israelites during the entire journey. So let me read a couple of verses from Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And then it says his love endures forever. And the next verse is give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Third verse is give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, then his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, then his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. So you see, it kind of repeats one phrase, his love endures forever, after you see different uh, attributes or different uh, things that God has done. What you can do, you can go back to the beginning of the year and list all that God has done for you. It may take some time. If you're not used to maintaining a journal, I would suggest take the calendar, your hard copy or in your cell phone if you have saved some of the activities. You can look back and uh, you can do it as a family exercise. You can uh, email me. I can send you a sheet, the one that we use in our home to do this exercise. I really like it because for me, when I come to the end of the year, I like to just look back. What are the milestones that has happened in my life? I remember this verse from 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. It reads, but Samuel, after he defeated the Philistines, he took a stone and it set it and he named it uh, Ebenezer. And meaning, thus far the Lord has helped us. So maybe in your uh, journey, maybe as far as you can remember, there are definitely certain milestones that God enabled you to cross. Okay. For me, this verse is a very powerful one. I remember the end of uh, one particular year, maybe in the 80s, I was in, in crossroads, you know, whether to take up a job, whether to get married or, um, or stay put in one particular place where my parents were. I was not, I wouldn't say I was very close to God. In fact, for the all-night service, when I went to church, I was actually mocking the Lord. Normally, the one of the blessings that the pastor gives is, Hitherto the Lord has been with you. He will be with you, uh, even the new year. I kind of uh, was commenting, He has not been with me thus far. So how will He be with me in the coming months? Meaning to say, how can I extrapolate something that has not happened? But uh, God met me beautifully during that service. Why am I recounting this? This is one of the milestones in my life. Just to remember how I can see God's hand has been in my life. You may be uh, in a place where you think you lost hope. 
or uh, you don't see there is uh, any place that you can move to you're in a tight spot please take the time take a piece of paper and a pen find a quiet place maybe it can be early in the morning or later in the night when others have gone to bed has god to bring to your remembrance the things he has done in your life or uh, moving forward um, you can make a beginning if you are a person who doesn't journal get a book and every day at the end of the day you can just write something good that has happened in your life or maybe uh, in your children's or in your spouse's life or your friend's life uh, this is a good exercise to do the next point is thanksgiving enables you to focus on the positives and not the negatives when lot of things that are happening in our life sometimes it it feels very overwhelming even one negative thing that happens in a day can kind of uh, make you forget all the good things that happen that particular day but when you sit down to thank god or to take stock of the day what you're doing you're looking at the good things that have happened i remember uh, when i was growing up my grandmother had was raising a lot of chickens to get egg i would love to sit uh, in the steps and just watch them pick grain from the ground they will use their feet to kind of clear the ground and they will just uh, the eyes would fall on the grain or the rice or whatever they wanted to uh, eat so what the chicken is doing is clearing everything and trying to feed on uh, the food it is looking for and that is a kind of exercise that you and i can do right when everything around us looks dark and gloomy or things are um, looking as though they're going downhill look at the good things that have happened um one of the things when the kids my when my children were all small every saturday we allotted for uh, writing the prayer or the thank you points for that particular week so all of them were given uh, a notebook like this um, so they would have written all that happened during the uh, rest of the days of the week so we will go around as a family and uh, make them list so i continue that uh, when i am having my quiet time so i was looking back on my week a lot of my kids have uh, living in different parts of uh, the us and i wrote i got a call from a couple of my daughters then i wrote uh, i made a decision on recording this message cooked few meals when you start listing you will see you can come up with a lot of uh, points okay this remembrance process whether you are looking at the uh, things that have happened uh, just that week or uh, the entire year or even the years before is very important we are talking about our heart right second peter 1 verses 12 to 13 reads uh, peter is writing Yes I think it is right as long as I am in this tent to stir you up by reminding you okay um the next point is thanksgiving opens you to the presence and power of god psalm 100 verse 4 reads enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name the uh, the gates of the court was the entrance to the tabernacle it's a holy place uh, where god established so he could dwell among his chosen people so the outer court was uh, framed by the gates and then you have the courts then the inner courts so picture this when you are thanking god you are entering into his presence 
who are you thankful to you're thanking god right so you are entering god's presence and his power so any time you turn to god you are turning towards solutions you are turning towards power you are turning towards his presence you are turning towards his peace you are turning towards light and that is done by thanksgiving one of my favorite verses in the scripture is proverbs 4:18 it reads the way of the righteous is like morning light that gets brighter and brighter till it is full day from the dawn to the midday the light keeps getting brighter and brighter so what does it mean in the life of a believer when you see god when you come before him you will always find answers your life will get better that gives me tremendous hope this is contrary to a lot of teaching where we we are taught to fear god or i do believe in reverential fear but what i mean is where people are afraid to come before god thinking they will be judged that coming before god means god is going to find all the uh, mistakes when god shines his light on you it is so that he will uh, deliver you from darkness from the hold of satan from the bondage of satan he wants to bring freedom into your lives bringing freedom or liberating you from a place of bondage or darkness brings dignity to yourself what is one other reason that keeps people away from turning to god not knowing that god is a good god James 1:17 says every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows we tend to attribute all the wrong things that happen in our life as coming from the hand of god where is the part of our wrong decisions whereas the part of the consequences of a sin in our life where is the part of satan constantly trying to uh, destroy us psalm 103 says bless the lord o my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquities who heals all your diseases who redeems your life from destruction who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles that is the nature of god my friend knowing this it will draw you to god bible says it is the goodness of god that brings repentance the next point is thanksgiving pleases god luke 17 verses 15 to 19 brings the story of the 10 lepers that is a another thing that you can include in your thanksgiving celebration you can read the story of the 10 lepers Let me just read the last two verses in that story. And one of them when he saw that he was healed, so one of the 10 lepers who was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, "Were there not 10 cleansed? Where are the other 9?" were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner and he said to him arise go your way your faith has 
made you well. God was pleased with this leper. Faith pleases God. Thanking God is faith. The ten lepers were asked to go and show themselves to the priest. So they were going in faith even before they were cleansed. Thanking God is glorifying Him. And that is what that one leper who came back and thanked God. And it was this faith that made him whole. Other than being healed of his leprosy, this leper got his fingers or uh, whatever the extremities he lost. That is being made whole. So thanksgiving is connected to faith. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 reads, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Abounding in faith with thanksgiving. It means if you are not thanksgiving or giving thanks, you are not abounding in faith. My, that is a very powerful uh, statement. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's what Hebrews 11 1 defines faith as. You are thanking God even before you see the evidence of what you're, you have prayed for. So this faith increases your capacity to receive. It enlarges your, um, your frame of reference. And also, it sustains you during the period of waiting. Just like when a farmer plants a seed, there is a seed and a time and a harvest time. Thanksgiving enables you to sustain your faith. It is very easy to despair when you see uh, that things are not happening according to your time table. When God has promised you something, let's say you have, uh, you have prayed seriously about something, and you know without any shadow of doubt that God is uh, definitely going to do this thing that you have prayed for. But um, you don't see the evidence of it right away. Switch yourself to the, the spiritual realm. When you don't see the evidence of it in the natural realm. And the way you do that is by thanksgiving. You keep your hopes high. Um, Saying, Lord, you said this and I believe it. So thanksgiving is an evidence of your trust in God, His faithfulness. And that's what uh, Sarah did in the Bible. She considered Him faithful. Hebrews 11, 11 reads, And by faith even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children, because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. So can you see that, my friend? How uh, important it is to, to know that the God who gave the promise is a faithful God. The next point is, Thanksgiving gives you victory. I like this uh, application of Thanksgiving. Um, 2 Corinthians 14, 57 reads, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 2, 14 reads, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So long we were seeing Thanksgiving as looking back, taking stock of what has happened. But here you see there's a connection between thanking God and 
victory in our life. Another version of uh, 2 Corinthians 2.14, which I just read is, Thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. This phrase uh, causes us to triumph is used only one other place that is in Colossians 2.15 when it says uh, that Jesus had triumphed over the principalities and the power. Thanksgiving causes you to walk in victory. How can you walk in victory? This is because um, you believe in the promises of God. You believe that in Christ, there is no situation that can be bigger than the solution. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide an escape so that you can stand up under it. This is the greatest hope that a believer can have. No situation can be a dead end for a believer. This is a very valuable truth that you can practically use in a day-to-day -day life. Anytime you feel that you are in a tight spot or you think you have depleted all the possible options, that you think there is no way that you can find a, a solution, it may be so in the natural realm, but according to this verse, it says, He will provide an escape so that you can stand up under it. Many times, friend, when I think, Lord, I can't do this. It is beyond me. I bring to remembrance this verse. My prayer in such a situation is, Lord, I know there has to be a solution. I know that you know the answer. Can you show it to me? So then, it is on me to quieten myself and receive it from God. Suddenly, an idea will come or somebody will call. When Adam and Eve sinned, after God created such a beautiful garden with everything that Adam and Eve would need, not only for themselves, but also for uh, the multiplication of it all over the earth. When sin entered, that was not the end of the story. The Creator God had a solution for this problem. And in the fullness of time, it happened. So think of that. Wherever you are, the Creator God has a solution for the problem that you're facing now. So you will come out victorious. That's what is thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Or the other verse is thanks be to God who gives us the victory. So I see this thanksgiving like, a, like if you see in the timeline, uh, of your life. There is one part where you can look back like we saw in Psalms uh, 136, right? You can go back and say, this is all God did in my life. He enabled me to uh, go to school. He enabled me to get married. He gave me children or, you know, he enabled me to overcome all this. All those you can list whatever has happened in your life. But you can also, moving forward, Say, in Christ, you are now you're going to use his promises. You're going to hold on to the promises and say, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you promised that all my children will be taught of the Lord. Great shall be the peace of thy home. If you have a child who is uh, lost and you've been praying hard, stop begging. And now let your prayer be one of victory. 
So Lord, you promised, your word says that. It can be in any situation. Let's say you are struggling to uh, find a solution. You can say, Lord, your word says, I have the mind of Christ. So, Lord, you are going to give me an answer. It can be praying for your spouse or your relative or your children. You can say, believe on the Lord Jesus and you and your household shall be saved. What are you basically saying there? You're saying, because that the word has entered your family through you, now you're allowing God, giving him permission, Lord, come and invade my house. Touch my child's life, touch my spouse. So you are a conduit for the light to enter your house. You can say, I'm joint heirs with Jesus. When you're struggling for your provisions. Lord, your word says this. And I know you will honor your word. So it is just a matter of time that I will enjoy the things that are going to come from your hand. That brings hope to a situation. Bible hope is a surety that it will happen. Not a maybe, because you are holding on to his promises. I hope you are able to get a picture of what thanksgiving can do for your life. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, we read, uh, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What does it mean? A lot of times uh, I've seen people uh, saying, giving thanks for the problems. You give thanks to God for the solutions. You could have gotten into the mess because of a number of reasons. So you thank God that whether um, it was because of somebody else's mistake or your mistake or... Uh, Satan, who is constantly on the lookout to devour God's people, right? Whatever situation that you are in, you thank God, in you I can find an answer. This is a very important truth. It pains me a lot when people enter into a stage state of hopelessness and uh, People have resorted to uh, taking their lives. Uh, it could be uh, some conflict situation or it could be a dead situation or it could be uh, health reasons. In the natural realm, it would seem as though there are no solutions. That is when, my friend, you tap on to the supernatural. There is a combination of the practical and the spiritual will bring supernatural results. For example, sometimes when you're in debt, uh, there are some practical things uh, you and I have to do, right? And then there is the spiritual component, the principle that God teaches in the Bible on how to handle money. That is the spiritual component. When both fuse together, you get supernatural result. So, what you see with your five senses or what you are experiencing is not the end of the story. Build your confidence, build your faith by going to, uh, to his promises. And that is what means, uh, thank God in all circumstances. Lord, I am able to come out of this with your help. When you look back on this year, a lot of things have happened. Lives have been lost, uh, businesses have been lost, uh, hopes have been lost. But that is not the end of the story. I want you to uh, use this time, even as we are coming to the end of the year, 
to uh, seek his face. All that we need for our living in the present times, God has already provided. Our eyes have to be open to the provisions that God has made, the solution that God has for the problem that we are facing. Sometimes even small things of maybe just sitting down and having a cup of tea or going for a walk or conversing with somebody. These are some of the ways that you can de-stress yourself when you are in a very tight spot. Okay. Thanksgiving is a fortress against enemy. What do I mean by that? Mind, our mind is the entry point for Satan. He was deceived, right? Man is a tripartite being. We have the spirit part of us, which is able to commune with God. The soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And then you have your body. It is in the soulish realm that you can easily get agitated. When you see a problem uh, which you think you don't have an answer for. And God has a solution for that. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 reads, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication or petition, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's a beautiful verse. Bathe all your requests, all your needs in thanksgiving. I think of a basket which is made up of thanksgiving. We collected all the thank you points, right? That is where you're going to present. Lord, I thank you that you are there for us. I thank you, Lord, that in the past you have seen us through. Thank you, Lord, that for the future you have great plans for us. And in that basket that you weaved with all your thank you points, put all your petitions and your requests and then present it before God. And the peace of God will guard your hearts and your mind. Remember when I first started, I said thanksgiving is a heart issue and it is your heart that you need to uh, protect, guard it. And this is a beautiful verse for that. When your mind is not agitated, you create space for God to communicate with you. You open your heart to hear from God. But in a panic, in a fearful mode, you are not placing yourself to receive from God. Sometimes it's a very simple thing. It is just a transmission problem. You are here, all agitated. God has a solution. He's just trying to communicate with you. Have you seen when the kids are making a lot of noise, when you're... Um, when the mother or father is trying to call the child and there, there's a background, there is some music going on or a TV going on, it's hard for them to listen. That is what anxiety does to you. It prevents you from hearing the word of God. Bathe all your requests, your anxiety with thanksgiving. Shall we do that? Half of your problem will vanish. They will not seem like a problem at all when you start looking at all the things that God has done in the past. And when you look at all the things He has promised that you can do in Him, the size of the problem will become smaller. And also, your definition of what you call as a problem will also change. And also, you get to know more about God. The God who promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you, is always beside you and inside of you. Okay? Have a good Thanksgiving season, my friend. I pray that uh, the words that were spoken today will take root and yield results. Bring 
peace in our hearts and in our mind. Thank you. Shall I close with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the provision that you have made in your word uh, for us to live a peaceful life, for us to be protected from the harshness of this world and for us to have a inner peace. I thank you, Father, that you knowing that we are living in a fallen world, you've given all these tools for us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will bring it to remembrance to each one of us, Lord, uh, at the right time. And also that we would be doers of the word. In the loving name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. I would like to uh, thank you for your partnership. Your gifts have enabled us to buy airtime for uh, the radio program, Minute with a Master. And it is a bite-sized Bible truth for a minute. And here is a sample of this. Here's Minute with the Master, brought to you by Bella Victor. Today's question is, what is having a thankful heart? A thankful heart is a grateful heart. A thankful heart is other-centered. It sees the part others have in our life. A thankful heart sees God as the giver and sustainer of life. An unthankful heart towards God is a sign of depraved mind, as said in Romans 1.21. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him. My dear friends, may we not become cold to God. During this season of thanksgiving, let us look back with gratitude to God and list all He has done for us, even when we didn't deserve them. Ephesians instructs us, Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Thanksgiving. This is a Liberating Truth brought to you by Bella Victor. For more information, contact Bella and MinuteWithTheMaster.com. And uh, we also have another program called Symphony. We create content for South Asian women and try to reach them by way of uh, the media and message. And of course, what we are doing now is Life with Bella. For this month, as a way of thanking, when you partner with us, I would like to send one of these items. The details are uh, given here. I would like you to be a part of our ministry. And I would also like for you to uh, share or subscribe to any of these messages that you see. If it can build hope in someone else's life, please do that. Thank you.